Now this PowerPoint here goes through the seven layers of the OSI model. The OSI model is basically a set of standards that the networking community uses to break down data as it gets sent from one computer to the next. It's a way to ensure that different networking brands can commu communicate with each other. Uh, for example, a Intel networking card communicating with a Broadcom networking card. Um, if they didn't have a set of standards, each company would probably uh, break down and reassemble the data uh, different ways. So this just ensures that they're doing it in the same way and there's seven different steps or layers uh, that it uses. Here are the seven layers. We have physical data link network transport session presentation and application. Now uh, one way that I use to remember it is taking the first letter of each layer and the mnemonic device is please do not throw sausage pizza away. Again, that's starting at the bottom with please do not throw sausage pizza away. Um, starting from the top, another one that people commonly use is all people seem to need data processing. Um, whatever you, way you choose to remember it, uh, whatever works, go ahead and use that. Um, you will have to know them uh, for the test. In this particular example, we have uh, Janet who's going to send an email to her cousin in Australia. Um, so we're going to look at the seven layers of the OSI model and describe how that email gets broken down and how it gets reassembled um, when Janet sends it to her cousin in Australia. Now the first part is the application layer. This provides network services to application processes such as electronic mail, file transfer, and terminal emulation. Uh, Janet uses an email application to write her email and to attach the photo. The application layer takes the data from the email application. It provides a service to the email application. The email application might be Hotmail, it might be Outlook. Um, so basically at the application layer, we're determining what application uh, that we're using. And then we go on to uh, down to the presentation layer. Here we're talking about um, ensuring the data is read readable, format of the data, and data structures. The presentation layer is concerned with the format of the data. It records that the email is plain text or rich text, depending on what type of email program she used, and that the photo is a graphics file, for example, a JPEG file or a bitmap file. So at this presentation layer here, we're determining what form the data is in. Any compression or encryption could also be carried out by the presentation layer. So if we want to encrypt it to make it more secure, that would happen at the presentation layer. Again, these are all standards that are used for each um, networking um, brand as the information is being sent or transferred. Um, then that email gets sent down to the session layer. So first we've got the application layer that said we use an email application um, to send this transmission. Then at the presentation layer, we decided that it was a uh, rich text and it had a picture of a JPEG. Then it gets sent on down to the session. This establishes, manages, and terminates sessions between applications. The session layer is concerned with starting, managing, and ending the communication between Jan's computer and her cousin's computer. The data still exists on a data stream. So here we're worrying about how we're going to get uh, from Jan's computer to her cousin's computer in Australia. Um, then it gets sent down to the transport layer. It's concerned with the transportation issues between the hosts, ensures uh, transport reliability, establishes, maintains, and terminates virtual circuits. Basically how our information is getting from one place uh, to the next. The transportation layer takes the data from the session layer and splits it up into segments that are the right size for sending. You can't just send that whole big email um, in one big packet. It needs to be sent or it needs to be broken down. So that's what we're doing here at the transport layer. It has the information to say which protocol is being used at the upper layer levels. In this case, it's an email, so the email protocol is being used. Now remember, protocols are just a language. So what language are we going to communicate our emails with? Um, that's the type of protocol that we're going to be using. In this case, it would be SMTP, which stands for Simple Mail Transfer Protocol. Um, it checks that all the segments reach their destination, which is going to be the cousin's computer. Now the network address and best path determination provides reliable transfer of data across the media. The network layer takes the segments that we just got broken down to. 
It adds a header to each segment, giving the IP address of Jan's PC and her cousin's PC. Um, every single computer in the world has to have a unique IP address. Um, so her cousin's computer has to have a unique IP address. We need to know that address um, to be able to send it to her computer. Um, once we add that information on there, it's called a packet now. So we went from a segment to a packet. As the packet travels to Australia, the routers along the way will look at the IP address and decide where the packet should go next. So as that packet gets sent across the internet, uh, those routers will look at it and say, okay, this is the address of it, we need to send it to this router. Okay, this is the address of it, we need to send it to this router. And so on, so on until we get, finally, to her cousin's PC. And we, again, we know it's her cousin's PC because it has that unique IP address. Um, then down to the data link layer. This provides reliable transfer of data across media. has to do with our physical addressing, network topology, error notification, and flow control. Now, the data link layer takes the packet and adds more information, including the physical MAC address of the source computer and the computer or router which will handle the packet next. Uh, this new data is called a frame. Switches can look at the MAC address and pass it on in the right direction. Um, the, the data link layer here, we're not really concerned with the MAC addresses um, in this class, but I just wanted to point out uh, what happens to it as it goes down the layers. So we went from our segments to our packets, and now we're on to a frame. Lastly, we have the uh, physical layer. This has to do with our cables and our ones and zeros and how we're transmitting uh, that data back and forth. Uh, the physical layer takes the frame, it sees it as a string of bits, zeros and ones, and then converts the, converts the bits to electrical signals that can be sent along a cable. Uh, if we were using fiber optics, instead of converting it to electrical signals, it would convert it to um, light signals. So that's what the physical layer does, it actually sends our ones and zeros across our network media, whatever we're using. The journey. Janet's email is now a stream of electrical pulses traveling along the cable. It will pass through many networks and network devices. It may be converted to light signals on optical fiber cables or to radio waves or microwaves. Routers will strip off, strip off the old physical address, look at the IP address, and put in the physical address, address of the next router. So we made that journey across the network. Now it reaches her cousin's computer. Now we have to reassemble that data. So this is how it reassembles it. The electrical signals arrive at the cousin's computer. The physical layer takes the signals and converts them back to bits, ones and zeros. It passes them up to the data link layer. So first we went down the OSI model. Now we're going back up the OSI model. Second layer, the data link layer. The data link layer checks that the physical address is the right address for the, com for the cousin's computer. It checks that the frame does not contain any errors. It strips off the physical address and other frame information, leaving a packet. It passes the result up the network layer. The network layer takes the packet from the data link layer. It checks that the IP address is in the right address for the cousin's computer. It strips off the IP address and other packet information, leaving a segment. It passes the result up the transport layer. So we keep adding more, in more information uh, back onto it. The transport layer takes a segment from the network layer. It fits all the segments back together in the right order to make the data stream again. If any segments are missing or damaged, it can arrange for them to be sent again. It checks to see which higher level protocol was used and finds that the data is an email. The session layer receives the data stream of the email from the transport layer. If the whole of the email has been received correctly, it can close the communication sessions between the computers. It passes the data stream up to the presentation layer. So we found out that it's an email. We found out that it's been received correctly. Now we need to send it up to the presentation layer so we can determine what type of uh, encoding was used, whether it was a JPEG or a bitmap, rich text or what. The presentation layer takes the data stream from the session layer. It finds that the data consists of an email in plain text and in an image in the form of a JPEG. If there's any compression and encryption, the presentation, presentation layer, layer would deal with it. It passes the data up to the application layer. So now we have it all figured out. We know that's an email message. We know that it has a picture. We know that it consists of plain text. 
Um, if there was any compression or encryption, it would have took care of that. And the last thing that we have is send it up to our application that can read that email message. The application layer receives the data from the presentation layer, gives the data to the right form, uh, to the cousin's email application so that the cousin will be able to read the email and open up the attachment to see the photo. The email has traveled down all seven layers of the OSI model in Jan's computer. It then passed as electrical, light, or radio signals across many networks and through many devices. And the cousin's computer traveled up through all seven layers of the OSI model to become an email again. Um, it seems to Jana and her, and her cousin that they are communicating directly with each other. They do not know uh, what happens along the email's journey. They don't need to know what happens. This is just something that happens in the background. I don't expect you guys to thoroughly understand it. Um, just know uh, what it's about, um, how it's used, um, know the different layers of the OSI model, and that it ensures delivery of packets between unlike systems.